All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Elmore County Commission work session Thursday, February 23rd, 2017. We appreciate your participation and attendance today. This is a scheduled meeting uh, to replace our meeting scheduled next Monday due to not being able to form a quorum next week. We will begin with our uh, regular business, review the minutes of the February 13, 2017 commission meeting and any corrections. Are there any comments, questions, suggestions, corrections? All right, we'll move forward with the review of the memorandum of warrants for the period of February 9, 2017 through February 17, 2017. Ms. McDuffie, do you have that information? Uh, the amount is um, $446,423.28. Thank you. Any discussion on that? All right, moving forward with the old business. Uh, first item is to consider the hiring of a new Elmore County attorney. Are there any discussion, comments regarding that? Chairman, I, I looked at the, uh, reviewed all of the, the uh, resumes and information we received, and uh, while they all seem very, um, very good uh, attorneys with uh, plenty of information supplied so they could all be evaluated, um, I, um, I feel as if Jeff Courtney is, is one that has been here before and has the experience of uh, previously uh, having served the uh, county commission in that capacity. So. I, uh, I found great value in that experience. Thank you, Commissioner Mercer. Any others? I, I concur uh, with Commissioner uh, Mercer. Uh, There's a big plus to having that, uh, that experience in county government already, uh, and that certainly all t attorneys are learned in the law, but I, I, I I'm sure that we would all agree that at times county law is, is a specific uh, area that some attorneys uh, very seldom ever practice in that area. And uh, I, I just think his being here before and having the history with the county commission is a very big plus and a very big asset in moving forward with uh, serving the people of the county. All right. Thank you. Any others? Thank you. Uh, my only concern, uh, Mr. Chairman, was that you and I talked about this, is there's a difference in cost. And I just want to make sure that we understand you're paying $50 an hour versus uh, more, 150 versus 200 So that's the only thing I would say in relation to that. But you guys have weighed that out. You know, we need to look at that, I think, in everything we do, to be honest like whether it's equipment for our engineering department or whatever, if we're going to look at it from that standpoint. Because like y'all have said, I think, and, I, and Mr. Falk, we just got, and he don't live in the county, so I kind of th threw that out. But, you know, as Commissioner Daughter said, both of them are attorneys for quite a while, and they're probably qualified. So the only thing I would say is if there is a concern from a citizen or whatever that you're paying uh, 25 percent more for one than the other. That's the only thing that would concern me is how do you deal with that? And that's mm -hmm. you know, all I'll say in relation to that. I appreciate that. I appreciate all the comments. I, I have a few that I would like to, to say as well. I, too, have reviewed the information provided. I feel like uh, we are blessed in Elmore County to have a, a number of uh, attorneys who practice law in this county who uh, do an excellent job and are fully uh, equipped to serve uh, the county commission. 
um, with respect to um, Jeff Courtney's experience with the county commission. Um, that obviously is a plus. I think we all would agree that, that experience does uh, matter. And I think to Commissioner Holt's point, uh, which is, is definitely duly noted, um, one is I, I think that there the proposals given to us uh, are uh, in, in some way negotiable, and if given the opportunity, I would take all those things into consideration when entering into negotiations with any of these individuals. And second, um, I think from an efficiency standpoint, when you look at things that are paid by the hour, um, we've all hired someone uh, who we pay by the hour, and um, how quickly they get something done is it, it matters, and someone with uh, previous uh, county government experience uh, may, in fact, uh, move through some of the, the things that we're asking them to do quicker than someone who is going through the stages of learning that process where, you know, he may, in fact, get something done in 30 minutes or an hour where a, a new uh, attorney who's um, in the beginning stages of learning county government may may take a little bit longer. Um, so uh, that's just uh, that's uh, speculation on my part, but I do think it's something to consider. And I, I agree that we do need to be looking at, at funding of all of these things. And I think that we would all agree after looking at, at everything that we have seen up to this point, uh, any of these individuals would probably be more cost efficient than our previous experience. Any other discussion? All right, we'll move to discussing the necessity of obtaining an independent audit of county financials after obtaining the completed fiscal year 2015 audit, which we recently received and were presented at the last uh, meeting. So we'll open this up to discussion from any of the commissioners with regards to this. Uh, since I'm the one that requested it be on the agenda, that I don't have anything negative to say about it at all. I just want to make sure that we all understand what the examiner's role is in their audit. It's not to tell us what to do or how to do it or to find fault in what's being done. It's just to make sure that the money goes in the right account and it's accounted for. That's you know, the only thing I'd say. It's not like... Uh, an outside audit from the standpoint, but I'm not saying we do want them to say we need to all understand that's what they do and that's what the scope of their job is. And I'll leave it at that. Any other thoughts or comments? I, I agree with what you're saying, Commissioner Holt, with respect to the auditor. At least uh, we can all be confident now that we have accurate information by which we can make some decisions and look at, and that's right. what I think the auditors do provide, is, or the examiners provide, is at least we can be assured that, that we're to that point. And, um, you know, I like to think, and people ask me regularly about county commission and the things that are going on, as sure each of you, and I think that we have a very qualified team of county commissioners up here with various experiences uh, in banking and small business ownership and, and government and other areas and um, we, with the information that we now have, um, I think that we can formulate some plans to, to move forward um, and, you know, that's my, my thoughts on it. Any others? Okay, we'll move forward uh, with new business. We'd like to invite Scott Pierce, who is the attorney uh, for Elmore, Elmore Water and Sewer Authority, to discuss the restatement of existing certificate of incorporation resolution. Is that right? It's blue. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yes, I represent Elmore Water and Sewer Authority. Uh, which this board, this commission uh, authorized its incorporation, and whenever it, it needs to uh, amend its, its existing certificate, it needs to come back to the commission for approval. Uh, one problem they've had in the past is they've, I think they've got four or five different amendments that, since the original incorporation decades ago, and they have to call me every time uh, 
you know, they want to make sure that they're doing something in compliance with their certificate of incorporation, and I do charge by the hour for that kind of work, and I'm sure they're probably tired of paying me for it. So uh, the, the thought would be that we would do an amendment to the existing certificate of incorporation, take all the operative uh, provisions in there, and put it into one document. Um, to, as an example, their service area over the years has changed. Um, there are four or five different definitions of it in, in the different amendments. If you look at the wrong one, it, you know, it, doesn't, it doesn't cover everything right. So it's best to, to kind of dispense with all those other ones and have one document. So that's, that's what they're asking for. There's no, no substantive changes at all. Uh, no changes in the area, no changes in service, anything. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Was this this was done at their recent meeting? It was done in the, I think December meeting. Okay. The problem I had a um, a funeral <laughs> in the meantime and have not been able to get up here. For okay. This, so <laughs> kind of delayed it a little bit. Any comments or questions, Mr. Pierce? Thank you, Mr. Pierce. We appreciate you being here. Thank you all. Okay, we'll proceed with uh, considering a Central Elmore Water and Sewer Authority Board appointment, which is due uh, March 27, 2017. The candidate listed uh, to this point is Ron Johnson. Have any of the commissioners received any other information or candidate names? No. All right, thank you. We'll keep this on the agenda until the appointed time. Consider the fiscal year 17 ADEM recycling grant application. Mr. Byer. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, this is an item that I brought up in my report at the last meeting, and uh, this is the finalized application. We're just asking for the Chairman to be able to execute this. This is 100% um, grant funds from uh, um, ADEM if we are awarded it. And just some highlights of it, it provides some supplies for our schools related to recycling. Um, some mobile collection trailers, and a uh, baler for the city of Watumpke if we're successful. So, do you all have any questions of that? What's the time frame? Uh, it's due March 1st, and they normally award it in the uh, end of the summer to take effect in the uh, next fiscal year. Any questions, comments? All right, thank you, Mr. Byer. We'll move to consider awarding the bid inquiry 2017-2020 uh, for a wide area mower to the lowest bidder, Coblentz Equipment and Parts. Yes, sir. This is the uh, the last major item in our uh, equipment rotation for this year. Uh, this is a, uh, a single unit that includes a triple wide mower that is more like a uh, zero turn mower, um, kind of a zero turn on steroids that you can mow the right of ways with. Uh, it's much more compact, and it also allows for a, uh, uh, a better cut on the right-of-way. And uh, so we think this is going to have a, a good application in lieu of our tractors pulling uh, our bat wings behind it. It also has an attachment that uh, will allow us to use all our um, skid steer attachments for it, so we'll be able to use this piece of equipment year-round to do maintenance work. So we think we're going to um, be able to eliminate multiple pieces of equipment by using this. This is one unit that we're getting and uh, try it out. We'll still have the, the, uh, the remaining uh, three uh, mowers and bat wings, so we're not going whole hog and, and going wild with it, but we think this has a lot of promise for us, and we've been uh, kind of saving up to get this over the last two fiscal years. So. Thank you. Any comments, questions? What price is it? It's $137,000. You say you've been saving up for the last few years. What have you been saving? Where the money been coming from? What you saving? Putting that, putting away money from the equipment sales okay. in our rotation, uh -huh. uh, equipment rotation fund. Thank you. All right. Consider the fiscal year 17 state emergency management performance grant cooperative agreement. Mr. Uh, Jones. Yes, Chairman, Commissioners. This is an annual allocation that we have received, or a grant that the state legislature has uh, put into the, the state general fund budget uh, towards local emergency management programs. This is a uh, small grant we get each year. It, it's ranged anywhere from 2000 to, say, $4,500. Um, this grant 
is for our operational expenses. It, it, it is a small grant for, you know, a, a reimbursement back for some of our operational expenditures out of our office. Uh, this, it is administered through the Alabama Emergency Management Agency, and uh, it's a, this is a standard grant that we receive in the grant application, or the uh, grant agreement, I should say. The cooperative agreement is a standard agreement that we get annually. Thank you. If there's no comments or questions, we'll move to consider the reallocated EMA fiscal year 16 Homeland Security grant funding through ALEA for projects for the Santuck Volunteer Fire Department and the Central Elmore Water and Sewer Authority with corresponding budget amendments. Uh, yes, Chairman, and, and again, Commissioners, these, this uh, is Homeland Security funding uh, that was opened up as a competitive grant uh, process last fall. The application period was back in October of last year. Uh, the State Homeland Security Department under ALEA had anticipated having this out in November, and for some reason we've just now gotten the awards. It, it did get uh, delayed quite a bit. Uh, this was opened up to all of the public safety departments and public works agencies in the counties to uh, apply for funds. There were very uh, uh, restrictive guidelines on certain projects that they could apply for. And we put this out to all of our stakeholders across the county. We had nine project applications that went forward. And the two that were funded, the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency put a panel together to judge these. And the two that were awarded were the, the two here, the Santuck Fire Department uh, for some communications upgrades and the Central Elmore Water and Sewer Authority for some security enhancements at one of their facilities. Um, and that, that it does, this, this action does incorporate the budget amendments as requested. Uh, this would go into our grants line in the general fund budget. This, this is one of those things I've discussed with a few of you about our budget and the, the unanticipated revenues that we may receive during a year where we have to do a budget amendment for these, these funds because these are federal funds. They're paid 100%. There is no local match. Um, we just are the uh, basically the administering agent for these grant funds. Do you recall how many uh, entities throughout the county uh, applied for nine. these grant? Nine. Nine. Yes, sir. Nine. And two received. Two. Two of the nine received funding. Yes, sir. There were 65 entities across the state, and if I remember correctly. We were one of just a couple of counties that received two entities within the county that were funded. And most, I would say most counties had less than five applications. And like I say, we put nine in. There were a few that were like we were that, that put in, you know, several more applications. But, you know, I'm one of those that you're not going to get it if you don't ask. So, you know, we put in for as many as we could get our stakeholders to apply. So. But we got we got two out of our nine that applied. Good, thank and, you. And I'll be happy if if y'all want to know all of the entities that did apply. I'll be happy to you know to supply that information to you. Be happy to. Okay. We just appreciate you uh, facilitating that and encouraging them to do that. Um, sure. All right, we'll proceed with consider authorizing a new classification of program coordinator in the emergency management agency and to authorize the advertising and hire process for the position immediately. Yes, Mr. Chairman, this again, this is uh, the, the upon Ms. Trost's resignation, this is us trying to move forward as, as uh, expeditiously as possible to refill that position um, in in receiving her resignation obviously I pulled the job descriptions for her position out and, and or the posi the job description for the planner position out and was reviewing it and uh, it, it with the requirements and responsibilities we have now it, it the current job descriptions that we have are just not quite adequate and uh, I would request that this one be uh, approved to utilize and uh, this would be one that we would want to carry forward for, for many years and utilize this classification. Um, at the same time, I would like to say that I would like to continue reviewing uh, the job classifications that we currently have and 
possibly make some modifications there as well. But this would keep us on task uh, moving forward with this current, uh, uh, or if you approve this, this particular classification, this would allow us to go ahead and advertise. And uh, we, we want to do at least a three week advertising period um, and, and then put a, a process together of reviewing those applicants after that. And um, this would keep us on track to have somebody in here about the time that Ms. Trost would be leaving. So we, you know, we would be able to get that accomplished fairly quickly. Thank you. Are, do you have any additional questions on that at all? Any of you? I have a problem with all this changing the job uh, descriptions and stuff from the old one. If we don't increase uh, their ability or whatever they need to do on the job uh, application, I think we need to take a little time and look at it because this summer is going to be ongoing. Uh, other departments would come and say, well, you change it for them. You know, change this one. I think this is needed. So we need to be careful how we go about doing that right now. So I think we need to give it a little bit more foresight and think about it a little bit and look at what you want and maybe look at some of the other things at the, what we already have in place and see what we can do that way. Mr. Jones, can you share with us uh, how you went about putting together this particular, did, did you research uh, other, other counties, other information? I did, Chairman. I pulled uh, job descriptions from four other counties with a very this very similar classification. The the, the main cl the main changes that were included in this job classification upgrade were the 24-hour on-call duty officer rotation, and then also incorporating the administrative taskings of the office into this, along with more of the uh, programmatic coordination. And, and the, the uh, elements of getting out and, and doing the outreach with the public, you know, the public information officer role. Obviously, social media was not something we used, you know, 10 years ago a whole lot whenever we, uh, you know, had the previous job description. We incorporated some of that into it as well. And uh, managing or helping to uh, assisting with the management of our website. So we took. Uh, Lee County, Baldwin County, uh, Coleman, and uh, a little bit from Montgomery on a couple of, of other job descriptions that are very similar in nature for this and, and melded them together and took the same format that we have used in the past and made it uh, fit that same format. That's, you know, this, you know, I developed the deputy director's job description back years ago and then the planner back then. So I used the exact same process that I used then to, to develop that. So, uh, you know, what, but however we need to proceed. Any other comments? When Ms. Frost leaves, how many people will you have on rotation, 24 rotation? It'll be me and the deputy director, the two that are on the rotation. That, and that's the way it has been. The, the, the uh, planner position has not been in that rotation right now. So we've always only had two, and right, this, this right. will just allow there to be a third one in That's there, right. so you're not on rotation That's all the right. time. So the, well, you're so always on call, I know, but That's, I mean. The, the director will eternally be yeah, on call 24-7, but it would give, like this weekend, if I'm out an of town or whatever, it gives yeah. a little bit of an additional personnel yeah. to be able to backfield or help out whenever I am out of pocket. Okay. Thank you. Any more money would be going towards this position, or is it going to stay the same there? It, it is a increase in the starting salary, but it will be considerably less than what she is making currently, because she's been here. You know, for that position, we'll actually be paying less than what we're currently paying. But I mean, you mean the starting? The, the starting pay will be more than the planner position. Yes, sir. The starting the starting pay uh, for the planner was around twelve fifty an hour and this one we're looking at fourteen fifty an hour. But it's a totally different classification, so but we don't change the classification. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. 
completely from, from being a planner classification to a program coordinator classification. It'd be a totally different job. I would I would request and probably will request that the, the planner position be abolished. But that's something, like I said, I made the comment, I would like to review all of the job descriptions and, and, and make those changes that need to be made to all of those positions that we have and job descriptions that we have. So if I understand correctly, and, and this may be speaking to Commissioner Reeves' point, that they're probably uh, with with many changes in, in things that are going on with social media and everything else, there's probably a lot of departments that maybe have a need, and I think we all recognize that as county commissioners, that uh, we have uh, some areas by which we, you know, need to update, um, whether it be personnel manual or, or other things, job descriptions. Uh, unfortunately, this is one that, that is in a timely manner because of the fact that that she resigned, um, that it that's, wasn't something that you anticipated this happening. It, that's right. Something that you have to, as a as the director of EMA, you have to respond to this. That's right. Just trying to maintain the adequate staffing for the requirements of the office. That's it. And if we simply fulfill uh, this position with someone who had the same planner qualifications, and it was just keeping everything the same then we wouldn't have the opportunity to modify it or we, we might but it would you might not find the right person you may not find the right person uh, there are some risks there that you know it, it there are a lot of items that just are not in the current job description that I, I would not want to fill the position as it currently reads I just I wouldn't want to because of all of the things that have evolved that we need this person to do you know, I would want to wait until we could change that classification dramatically. All right. All right. Eric, if I understood it right, correct me because I might not understand, might not have understood it right. Sure. At fourteen fifty an hour, that's less than what we're paying the existing employee. Yes, sir. Is that, okay. That is, that I is thought that's what you said, but I want to make that sure. That is correct. Okay. So this this change for this fiscal year would stay well within the fiscal budget if we made no other change but you know we would we would have a savings there it would, it would be within the fiscal year budget even with this change thank you how long have you been eight eight years and, and through the eight years how many steps would they know they do at the time she I'm not sure, sir. She started out at 12:50, and she's at over 15 and a quarter, 15:30 an hour. But it's it's strictly been the cost of livings or the merit salary of giving. What you were saying, we gonna hire somebody now less than what she's making, which is 15. And then, but then that's at the that's at the top of the scale. We're not talking about the bottom. You know, the bottom she came all the way up through old steps like all the rest of our employees. And then when she got to the top, now we're going to change the classification in order to uh, hire somebody to do these things. And uh, I think before we do that, we need to just maybe take the personnel manager and look at it because it's out of date anyway. So we as a commission don't want to do anything. And maybe somebody in the other department, some person or uh, some employee in the other department will come in with a lawsuit. But we're talking about public employees. We're not talking about private employees now. I mean, it's different when you're working for the private. Like, I got sure. a business yes, sir. working for. But when yes, you come to working for the citizens <coughs> or for the state or whatever, it's a little bit different. You can't just change something to, to benefit for another one, you know, to come out. And I, I understand that. I, I don't think we're changing it to benefit any individual. We're changing it to benefit the EMA and the county, which is giving us an opportunity to hire a, a more qualified individual who meets higher standards. I understand that. I didn't say we was in uh, for no individual. I was just saying that we don't need to change it that way. We need to do it in a process. It's a process, a way to go about doing these things. But, I mean, if the county commission want to do so, then fine. But I, I, I don't feel like I'll do it that way. But, you know, but I, I'm, I'm all for what you want. 
but I want to do it the right way. Yes, sir. Any other comments, thoughts? All right. Thank you, Mr. Jones. We'll move to the consent docket, approve uh, travel memo. Any discussion? How much is the travel memo? It's in your packet, page 90. Commissioner raised it's $4,660. Okay, and what's, uh, the travel memo is for what? Okay, um, as shown on page 90 of your packet, mm -hmm. um, it is a ACEA annual conference to Orange Beach for one employee. Um, it is the CIMS conference at Orange Beach for three employees. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you, Ms. McDuffie. Any other comments, questions regarding the travel memo? All right, moving forward, personnel notifications, notification of promotion of James Stroud, captain, effective 2-19-17. It's a vacant position. Notification of promotion of Carlos Richardson, lieutenant, effective 2-19-17 to replace James Stroud. Notification of promotion of Anna Smirnoff, Lieutenant, effective 2 1917 to replace Karen Myrick. Notification of promotion of Christopher Welch, Assistant Superintendent, effective 2 2017 to replace Mitch Savage. Reports to the Commission, um, Ms. McDuffie, County Administrator's report. Um, I do not have a report tonight, Chairman, but I'll be glad to answer any questions on any topics that you may have. Any questions or comments from Ms. McDuffie? All right, moving on to uh, Mr. Byer and the Highway Department report. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, just two items. One, uh, yesterday we were, uh, along with several of you, we, were, we got a good update at the uh, County Legislative Day, and uh, specifically there, there was a lot of bills, but specifically the ATRIP 2 um, proposal is still moving through the uh, process to uh, be introduced. Sonny Brassfield from ACCA uh, gave a report a little while ago on his legislative webinar that uh, they felt like they would have things in a, a position that hopefully next Thursday a bill will be introduced. Uh, they're still working out the details so we uh, avoid mistakes that have happened over the last couple of years with some uh, uh, disagreements on on items that are in the bill. Um, and then the other thing is the uh, the NACO Ledge Conference. Uh, a couple of us will be uh, heading out tomorrow to that and it's a very busy uh, schedule for us. Um, uh, for me, transportation-wise, for uh, several of you, it's transportation plus also uh, other areas of interest, and uh, we will be able to uh, have some good meetings with our uh, senators and and uh, congresswoman um, early next week, and uh, I'm just looking forward to that and being able to represent the county up there and uh, be able to bring some more information back to uh, either get us grant money or save us uh, funds in the future. So, Mr. Chairman, that's all I had in the way of report. Do you all have any uh, questions of me? Well, thank you. Emergency management, Mr. Jones. Uh, just a couple of items I wanted to mention. Uh, the sales tax holiday for severe weather preparedness is this weekend. Just wanted to remind everybody that begins tomorrow <laughs> night at 12.01 and it ends midnight Sunday. Um, this is an excellent opportunity for our citizens to go out and, and spend uh, some dollars on being prepared, but it's also an opportunity to save some dollars at the same time while doing that. And we've got a list of items I gave you, commissioners, that uh, we're encouraging people to go out and, and obtain, uh, but also we've posted it on the website that we have and we've pushed it out through social media. So any anything that anybody may have is a question, they can certainly call our office and ask us about that if they need to. We appreciate all of the, the county and the municipalities that participate in that every year. Uh, this afternoon at, at 1.30, we had a community services section meeting with our MAC group. Had a good crowd there. Uh, went over our BOAD uh, activities, the Volunteer Organizations Active and Disaster Group. We went over the activities that they coordinate in major emergencies and disaster situations and went over uh, a couple of other things. We've got a hurricane exercise we're participating with the state with, and we discussed that, and we're going to be kicking that planning off shortly. Um, again, our preparedness fair is April the 8th. We've spent a, a lot of time on coordinating that. I 
gave each of you a flyer, and I've got plenty of flyers. We can get more for, for anybody that would want one on the event. Uh, this year, again, we're, we're uh, partnering with the Board of Education, and we're hosting this out at the Wetumpka High School. Uh, we're close to 50 agencies now that are participating with us and, and supporting us with this event. Uh, the National Weather Service is actually going to be there and do a uh, storm spotter, the Skywarn storm spotter training class. We're actually going to do it probably in the Commons area of the high school from 1030 to 12 or 1230. And uh, if you know of anybody that's a weather enthusiast that would like to meet somebody from the National Weather Service and go through that training, it will be an excellent opportunity. Um, the only other two things I wanted to mention are some training opportunities that we have. One of them is a standardized awareness training for hazardous materials uh, or incidents involving hazardous materials. That will be on March 28th and 29th. It's two different class offerings, one on each of those days. And then we've got a, a class in May, May 2nd and 3rd we're hosting. It's event security planning for public safety professionals. And it's going to be taught by the Rural Domestic Preparedness Consortium. And uh, that should be a very good class. We've already got a lot of folks signing up for it. So that's all I've got at this time. Do you all have any additional questions for me? Thank you. Certainly. All right, reports from the commission. Commissioner Holt. Uh, I'd just like to say that I appreciate each and every one of you that is here tonight, and I appreciate the support from our staff and various issues of dealing with and it's Richie can tell you, he and I talk frequently about roads and bridges, and I appreciate their support in working with me on that and his staff, because I think we're making headway. Commissioner Dodger. Just appreciate the opportunity to be here and do the people's business. Commissioner Mercer. Yeah, I just want to say this. Uh, past couple of weeks, I have had a few issues in my district related to uh, the uh, highway department, I appreciate you and your staff assist behind you there for being reactive and, and taking care of those for us. We uh, appreciate all your hard work. Thank you. Mr. Reeves? We just want to thank everyone for being here. And Richie, I know I've been keeping you busy for the last month because the people have been keeping me busy, but then you've been doing an excellent job and I appreciate that. And uh, I appreciate all our employees. And uh, when y'all go to Washington, make sure you bring us something back that we can use. Uh, don't let them just stand around and shake your hand and say, well, we got to take something back there. I'm going to count because Commissioner Reed looking for something. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I, I, too, echo appreciation for everyone being here tonight and our staff. Um, I would like to make sure everyone's aware that there is a, a Mardi Gras parade this uh, Saturday in Wetumpka in the downtown area. I would like to invite all of y'all to participate and attend that. Uh, important calendar dates, Ms. McDuffie. Um, Saturday, March the 11th, countywide cleanup day, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., and it's going to be at the Redlands facility, the Central Elma Water and Sewer, uh, Water and Sewer Authority Redlands facility. Hopeful High School, Elmore County Judicial Complex, the Emerald Mountain Equestrian Center, Kent, which is in the old Highway Department building, and the Town of Elmore Annex. Uh, Monday, March 13th is our next County Commission work session at 5 p.m. with the business session immediately following. I did fail to mention one thing. Um, Mr. Byer may not want to share with anyone, but on March 1st, on Wednesday, Mr. Byer has been asked to testify before a congressional committee. Is that correct? Uh, so we uh, look forward to having Mr. Byer represent us in Washington, D.C., as Mr. Reeves said, and maybe that testimony will bring us back a gift uh, for Commissioner Reeves and the rest of us. So maybe that will be the uh, what we're really looking for. That will... I just hope it's not funny video. That's what I hope it's not. Yeah. Well, we'll make sure it's recorded. That, that's for sure. Uh, we will uh, reconvene in a few minutes. Welcome back. We'll begin our business meeting uh, Thursday, February 23, 2017 at 5.50 p.m. We'd like to invite Commissioner Holt to offer the invocation. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day, we're thankful for the things that you do for us. We're thankful 
for the guidance and direction that you give us to helpfully help the citizens of our county, help the citizens of our county. We ask that you be with the less fortunate, and we ask that you stay with Mr. Colley and, and give him the healing hand that you can do because we know how, how, how good of an employee is and how much we'd like to have him back on the job. Again, we ask, too, that you be with all of us that are traveling tomorrow and Chairman Stubbs Saturday and hopefully give us safe transportation to and from. We ask these things in your precious Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Duffy, if you'll call roll. Commissioner Holt. Here. Commissioner Dalton. Here. Chairman Stubbs. Here. Commissioner Mercer. Here. Commissioner Reed. All right, moving to the regular business. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the February 13, 2017 commission meeting? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Ms. McDuffie. Commissioner Holt? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Reeves? Yes. Motion to approve the memorandum of warrant for the period of February 9, 2017 through February 17, 2017. Second. Ms. McDuffie? Uh, Commissioner Holt? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Reeves? All right, we need to make a motion here uh, to select a, and hire a new Elmore County attorney and to authorize the chairman to negotiate a contract. Motion to approve the hiring of uh, attorney Jeff Courtney and to authorize the chairman to negotiate a contract accordingly. Second. Ms. McDuffie? Commissioner Holt? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Reeves? Yes. All right, is there a motion to approve or deny obtaining an independent audit of county financials? I make a motion that we allow ourselves more time to review the current audit and make a determination at a later date. So you're saying you'll put it on the table? Yes. Uh, motion to the table? Yes, temporarily. Second. Ms. McDuffie? Commissioner Holt? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Reeves? Yes. All right, proceeding to the new business, is there a motion to approve or deny the Elmore Water and Sewer Authority the restatement of existing certificate of incorporation resolution? Motion to approve. Second. Ms. McDuffie. Commissioner Holt. Yes. Commissioner Daltrey. Yes. Chairman Stubbs. Yes. Commissioner Mercer. Yes. Commissioner Reeves. Yes. Is there a motion to approve or deny the fiscal year 17 ADEM recycling grant application and approve the chairman to execute? Motion. Second. Ms. McDuffie. Commissioner Holt. Yes. Commissioner Daltrey. Yes. Chairman Stubbs. Yes. Commissioner Mercer. Yes. Commissioner Reeves. Yes. All right, motion to approve or deny awarding the bid inquiry 2017-20 for a wide area mower to the lowest bidder, Coblentz Equipment and Parts. Um, so moved. Second. Ms. McDuffie. Commissioner Holt. Yes. Commissioner Daltrey. Yes. Chairman Stubbs. Yes. Commissioner Mercer. Yes. Commissioner Reeves. Yes. Motion to approve or deny the fiscal year 17 state emergency and management performance grant cooperative agreement. Motion to approve. Second. Ms. McDuffie. Commissioner Holt. Yes. Commissioner Daltrey. Yes. Chairman Stubbs. Yes. Commissioner Mercer. Yes. Commissioner Reeves. Yes. Motion to approve or deny the reallocated EMA fiscal year 16 Homeland Security grant funding through ALEA for projects for the Santuck Volunteer Fire Department and Central Elmore Water and Sewer Authority and corresponding budget amendments. Motion to approve. Second. Ms. McDuffie. Commissioner Holt. Yes. Commissioner Daltrey. Yes. Chairman Stubbs. Yes. Commissioner Mercer. Yes. Commissioner Reeves. Yes. 
All right, motion to approve or deny authorizing a new classification of program coordinator in the emergency management agency and to authorize the advertising and hire process for the position immediately. Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Duffy. I apologize. Uh, Commissioner Holt? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. All right. Proceeding to the consent docket, motion to approve the travel memo. Motion approved. Any second? Second. Ms. McDuffie? Uh, Commissioner Holt? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Chairman Stubbs? Yes. Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. All right, proceeding to personnel notifications. Notification of promotion of James uh, Stroud. Let's make a motion to approve all the notification on here. I second it. Ms. McDuffie? Uh, these are personnel notifications that... Oh, they just notifications? Notifications. Okay, there's no, no need of motion here. Okay. No. Okay. okay. So the notification see, yeah. of promotion of James Stroud, Captain, effective 2 Notification of promotion of Carlos Richardson, Lieutenant, effective 2 Notification of promotion of Anna Smirnoff, Lieutenant, effective 2 To replace Karen Myrick. And notification of promotion of Christopher Welch, Assistant Superintendent, effective 2 To replace Mitch Savage. Any additional reports to the commission, Ms. McDuffie? No, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Byer? Mr. Jones? Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. Sorry. Second. <laughs> it's always a race, Ms. McDuffie. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you giving that one to? Uh, Commissioner Reeves. Commissioner Daltrey and Commissioner Reeves. Yeah. Reeves, you got okay. it. All right. <laughs> Commissioner Holt? Yes. Commissioner Daltrey? Yes. Commissioner Stubbs? Yes. Um, Commissioner Mercer? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Reeves. Meeting adjourned.